Welcome. I am Cheryl Butterfield, the state agent for volunteer and leadership development. And today our take 10 with 4-H is on communication, which is a very broad topic. So uh, this is some key things that I thought would be helpful or always helpful to me and good reminders to myself. But as we look at communication, um, just some key things that came into my mind were, of course, it's very important. And what we can say with that is that research, having looked at communication, says that 7% of it is verbal, 55% is your body language, and 38% the tone and inflection. That companies lose an average of 62.4 million per year because of miscommunications among employees. It's an awful lot. And that 57% of recruiters say there will be a growth in demand for interpersonal skills over the next five years. We talk about life skills and what we teach in 4-H all the time. This is another piece that says how important those life skills that we're teaching our youth are to their success in the future. So with all these statistics, it's easy to say communication is important. But it's also continual. And if you're like me, sometimes you're like, well, I said it once, I should be good. But remembering that um, it's a continual process. It may be an in-person conversation, a follow-up with a text or an email, or maybe it's a phone call that's followed by an email. And then we post on social media. We're sharing information on a regular basis uh, to try to communicate um, events, messages, um, happenings, deadlines. And we may need to use several different formats to make sure that message is getting across. But one of the most important things is being clear and concise. Um, and the reason I had a conversation earlier today about an event we had about how do you communicate to make sure everybody gets the information? Because it may be there, but it may need to be in different formats so that everybody can see it and making it as clear as possible. Maybe the way I present things, if it's too many lines of, um, written communication in a row, maybe I need to break that up more and make it easier to see the information since we're all in more of a hurry these days to learn what we need to from an email or whatever, we try to grab that information and go to make it simple and easy to gather that information. But there's five communication skills that I think are necessary for our successful communication. And one that we hear about all the time is listening. Much easier said than done. Uh, listening is something we know is an important skill, and depending maybe on our environment, what's going on with us, it may be easy to do, or it may be something we have to strive. But one of the things that's a really key that can help is you repeat what you hear or take notes. You're actively listening. You're looking at the person, you're responding, you're trying to hear what they're saying, not necessarily with a response, getting ready for your response, but to actually take in what's being said. Um, Great reminder for me to be going over this with you because I know there's things that I, I always need to be reminded of on this and listening is one of them. I mentioned the clear and concise and how important that is, but one of the things we need to make sure we don't do is don't assume the listener, under, listener understands our acronyms. Um, if working within 4-H as parent leaders, volunteers, new um, newcomers may not know all of our lingo, may not know what it events and about. So really understanding and sharing um, what we do in a clear and concise manner so that someone else can understand. So making it simple. Um, acronyms also are a something that makes me laugh because used to LOL when I was growing up was lots of love and now it's laugh out loud and if you put LOL and you mean laugh out loud and somebody assumes it's lots of love it can be a little um, little confusing <laughs> for everybody, but there are things that have changed. So really making sure that whoever you're speaking with is on understands the same acronyms you do if you are using those. Being aware of our nonverbal communication, that was mentioned of how important that is when we look at 55% of communication is body language. Um, I don't know about y'all, but um, when I'm working with my children, especially my own personal children, it was like, no, look at me. Or, Did you hear me? It was about that more than just the words. It was how we were communicating, what we were doing, were we paying attention, were we really listening? And that body language is a huge factor in that and how um, I think somebody's receiving my message and vice versa. Also the tone. Tone, we hear how important tone can be. 
But our tone is very important, which cannot, or is very difficult, I should say, to be conveyed when you're using any kind of text messaging or um, email because you, you can't see the inflections. You can try to emphasize some things, but um, it may not be taken the same. If you put exclamation points after something that may be um, taken as, yay, good job, or maybe like, well, hey, pay attention to this. So really, um, tone is a difficult one to convey unless you're talking in person. And then we need to be aware of how that tone sounds. Stress awareness. So these are some, uh, some things that really uh, speak to me. As I was telling you, these are good reminders for myself, but stress awareness, when I am stressed, I respond differently. And I probably respond differently more to my family. Uh, my husband would probably attest to this than anybody else, but it still affects my communication. And to be aware if it's a stressful situation and lots are going on, how to communicate that really makes it much clearer and um, things go more smoothly if I'm aware that that may affect me. Am I communicating during a stressful situation? You know, sometimes I don't think it is, but if I'm trying to do lots of things, um, it may not come out as clear. Emotion control, one for all of us. As we're working in all of our situations, if we're stressed, that can cause our emotions to rise. Or in, in an instance, say, as a parent, I'm speaking from my personal experiences, when I had any kind of situation that maybe I didn't feel was right or fair to my children, that emotion in me would rise. So how do you deal with that? What do you do with that? You, you bring that emotion down and look at the facts and try to decide um, how to handle that. Uh, jumping into things when you're in an emotional state, any kind of conversation can uh, not be as a successful and actually can to, lead to more conflict. So when we look at these things, um, we know communication is a continual thing that we have to do. It is not necessarily easy. It does take time. We seem to have um, a busier schedules than ever before. And we're always trying to keep up with everything we're doing and it can cause a lot of stress. And then we can get emotional over things that we don't think are right because things happen and cause us um, situations to be more difficult sometimes. But if we're aware of all this, it'll help us to communicate more clearly because a lot of times when we talk about communication, when it's clear and concise and there's an open communication, it helps alleviate conflict that we may have that um, in itself can make it more efficient in everything we do. If we can on the forefront with our communication, communicate clearly and um, avoid some of those situations. So when we look at, um, oh, I skipped my last little bullet. What are my emotions during this communication? Being aware of yourself. I think that's the most important thing. And what am I trying to accomplish? Um, a lot of times there may be something that we feel very strongly about, but it's really uh, may need to be addressed. But what do you want? How do you want to address it? And what is my goal of addressing this? To the, hopefully make a uh, situation better and for the good of the situation and the people involved, especially as we're talking about youth but really being aware of where you're headed, but where you're at when you're having these conversations is really important. And maybe we just um, pause. If we're really stressful, really emotional, um, that we pause before we have some conversations that may need to, to um, cool off before we address or think through the facts. But why? Why am I even bringing this out? Why do we care about our communication skills? Um, something to be reminded about is uh, we work with youth um, and, I was sharing an example earlier of realizing as a parent how much um, when your kids are little that they pay attention to you by sitting at a certain event and my daughter looking over and trying to mimic me how I was sitting and she was little. So it just dawned on me, you know, everything we do um, is absorbed by the youth around us. So communication, as we saw, it's so important for their future um, that we're wanting to be the best examples we can be and our examples matter in how we're dealing with situations. That's also how they're going to learn um, pieces of how to deal with them. We can tell them to do it one way, but then when we're doing it another, that's not um, conducive, to, conducive to a good example for them. And we've said it is an important life skill for our youth. We know um, that is something that there's a probably a deficit now that we've been through a, a time when we're not been in person as much. And so really working to develop those skills further for our kids is going to be important. But, and as I mentioned earlier, when our communication isn't as good as it should be, um, it can lead to conflict and create more work 
for all of us. And we know we're tired and, and running hard. And so doing something that creates more work for us is not where we'd want to head. So starting off with good communication can help alleviate that. So those are just some key things I wanted to share that I thought um, is always a good reminder, like I said, for myself, but maybe it is for you as well. Uh, thank you for joining today.